Hi everyone, welcome to the Rosip Island video diaries. This is the June 2021 video. My name is Hannah and I'm recording this video from Northern Tasmania in Australia. I live here with my husband and our two daughters, a few chickens, some fish and soon two kittens. Welcome everyone, new and returning viewers. I'm so happy and grateful that you take some of your time to spend it with me. I love the time that I get to come out here in my studio and sit down and talk about things that I love, which include knitting, lots of knitting, and a bit of hand dyeing of yarn. You can find me as Rosip Island on Instagram and also on Ravelry. I have a small hand dyeing business where I sell my yarn, hand dyed yarn, of course, obviously. You can find that by going to uh, rosipisland.com. So welcome everyone. Uh, it's a Sunday morning, 6th of June maybe, and yes, I'm out here in the studio with a lovely warm cup of tea. It's freezing outside, that's why I'm all rugged up. I'm in between rinsing yarn um, that I dyed yesterday and dying new yarn today so I thought I have a bit of a break and warm my hands on a cup of tea and um, catch up with you. Um, I actually did record this whole video yesterday, late in the day yesterday and realised last night when I was going to edit the video that it was just so dark that the video was really grainy and I wasn't happy with it. So I thought I won't delete it all, but I'll try and get time to record another video, maybe a bit shorter and replace it with that. And um, yes, hopefully um, this will all work out and that other uh, really dark grainy video will never make it up to YouTube. Let's hope for the best. So because of that, this is the second time I record this, I um, I hope that I will make sense and I won't think that I have already mentioned something but you don't know about it because that was in a video that's never going to be seen. And um, I also hope that I don't rush things and um, yes, I hope it will be okay. I will try to not um, make it too long. But who knows how I will go with that. Okay, so first, just a short update on what's happening in in my life, I guess, before we move on to uh, knitting content. Since my last video about a month ago, I have started a new started a new job, um, full time job. So that's obviously changed things quite a bit for me and and for my family. And I'm three weeks into it, and yes, we're 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 fine. We're moving along uh, nicely, and it seems to be working quite well. It's only a temporary position that I have until mid November, um, so I'm just sort of uh, making it work because it's only temporary, and everything else is just ticking along um, on the side and. Um, Yes, I think the only thing that's not really ticking along at all is my studies, but that's something that hopefully I can pick it up again um, when everything has settled a little bit. Okay, so that's sort of what's happening. It's winter and it's cold and yes, the weekends are just super important now that I am working Monday to Friday and, you know, don't see the daylight really during the week. Um, and I love catching up with you and I like love talking about my knitting so I really wanted to record a, a nice video um, with some nice relaxing time and tea and eating and all those things that I really enjoy. Today I have a few knitting projects to share with you. I have a few knitting projects that I haven't touched for a while. Other things have taken up all my attention and knitting time so I'll only show you what I'm actively working on. Uh, I do have a little bit of shop news stuff at the end to share with you as well. So um, if you're interested in any Rosip Island um, stuff, 
that will be at the end of this video. So really, I just want to uh, get on with it and uh, talk about my knitting. All right, my hands are almost um, defrosted. <laughs> Today I am wearing my Vinto Seul by Jennifer Steingauss, which I knit in a um, in Letlopi, Letlopi, um, an Icelandic wool. It's quite rustic, and um, this is quite an oversized jumper on me, but I really, really, really uh, love it. And the day like today, when I'm I'm working outside, dying, and um, it's you know it's at the moment the sun is out but that's going to change it's it's just a really nice sort of outer layer but i can also go inside and work inside and it's it's fine i don't have to keep taking things on and off so i'm wearing that i have a thermal underneath to keep really nice and warm i i know it's a rustic yarn but i have no problem at all with it being itchy or anything it's i mean i guess you feel like uh, you feel that you are wearing it but it's not an issue with my jumper i'm wearing a shawl and now i can't remember the name of the shawl but it i bought a kit at bendigo um at the sheep and wool show one year from adagio mills it's a hundred percent alpaca yarn a fingering weight four ply and they had this kit uh, with the yarn and then this shawl pattern by meg gatsby um I'm sure some of you out there would know what the pattern is. And um, I'll see if I, I how much time I get to edit this video. It might be that I do it during the week uh, in the evening. Um, so I can make a nice editing job out of it. And then I will do it as I normally do it with all the titles, all the information on the screen. I might put a few things down in the description box. Um, we'll just see. But um, if... For any reason i don't put in the information in the on the screen or in the description box uh, if you're able to go to ravelry i have all my projects and yarn on ravelry on the rosie island so that's the place to go and have a look and as always you are more than welcome to ask me questions or have comments down here in the comments on youtube or send me an instagram message or send me a message in ravelry or use the contact form in um, on my shop, rosiebarland.com. So yes, I'm always so happy to get any feedback or just, you know, messages <laughs> um, from all of you. Um, so yes. All right, that's what I'm wearing. That's what's going on. And now I like to share with you what I have uh, finished and what I'm working on. I have only finished one thing and that's something that just sort of took over for a couple of weeks um early may so just after i think i recorded my last video i realized that it was going to be my daughter's 11th birthday in a couple of weeks i thought oh, i really want to make her something knit her a new jumper and i had at that time also been going through um my stash um, my personal stash quite a bit and um, I have a lot of nice yarn in my stash and I have things that have been there for quite some time have a few jumper quantities or sweater quantities and I haven't um, for different reasons I haven't got around to to using them and I had a quantity of this Cascade Superwash 220 Superwash Sport weight yarn and this is my daughter's favorite color and I thought okay I'm going to use that so I think I had 10 skeins and I still have three and the other ones I made into a jumper for my daughter and I did spend all my knitting time on this um, during maybe two weeks and I got it done for her birthday and this is it I got it all done but i have not woven in any ends still uh, so this is uh, a flax it's the flax light pattern by tin canits but i have modified it slightly uh, because uh, because it's a sport weight so my gauge was not quite right 
uh, I went with the stitch count for the largest child size, but I went for the measurements with the smallest adult size, I believe. I cannot exactly remember, but I basically just modified it a bit to make it work and to fit my daughter. Uh, I had it all done for her birthday, but I didn't um, do any finishing on it because I wanted her to try it on and make sure that it was fine um, and a good fit and right length and everything. And it was, it was how she wanted it. And then of course now it's been like another two weeks and I still have to weave in all the ends. <laughs> so as you can see that um, I haven't done the pearl rows on the sleeves like the original pattern has, um, but yeah, it's just a very, um, just a plain jumper and uh, quite lightweight, so that's nice. I, uh, you can see my knitting is not very even. This yarn is not very forgiving uh, if you don't have a very even gauge when you knit. And because I sort of knit at all different times, where my stress levels and everything are all, at all different stages, so my, my gauge varies a bit from session to session. And you can see that this. Now, this has not been washed and blocked, so that it might even out a little bit when I do that. So that's Flax Light by Tin Can Knits in Cascade 220 Superwash Sport. And my daughter um, really liked it. And hopefully once I, you know, really finish it, she will enjoy wearing it. I did uh, recently make her a cardigan based on the flax um, pattern. And that has been working really well for her. Um... And then I have a few things that I have been working on a little bit. But as I said, that jumper just took all of my time for, for a little bit. So I haven't been working very much on anything else. One thing, um, the only pair of socks that I'm working on at the moment, I still have a pair of socks that I need to put heels in. And that has still not happened. <laughs> I have other more important things to do. Uh, so I had been knitting on, oh, it's a bit of a tangle, these socks. These socks, uh, this one, I knit uh, during our holiday in Queensland, um, at the last school holidays. This yarn is just a basic sock or something like that that I purchased at Spotlight for, you know, some time ago. Oh, it's really tangled. Um, it's, it's, you know, definitely, um, you know, a, a good um, sock yarn, you know, for the price you pay for it. And I think the striping is it's quite fun. So I had this one just, you know, I made a toe and everything. I'm going to put in an afterthought heel. And then I started on the second sock. And I have now completed it down to where I need to decrease for the toe. And the knitting I did on this, I did um, when we went to the movies with my daughter, you know, around her birthday. So we saw Raya and the Last Dragon, I think it's called. And I got um, a bit knit on, on this sock. And now it's also at the stage where I need to put the toe in. So a little bit of sock knitting did happen. Uh, and now I don't have any. Well, then I didn't have any easy small project to work on. But actually, I just recently, a couple of days ago, cast on something else. That's not a sock, but it sort of works in the same way. Well, not in the same way. It has, um, it's also a nice small project with just plain knitting that you can easily pick up. And that is a hot water bottle cosy that I um, realized that we need. So we've got a, um, a couple of new hot water bottles and I realized that, so that's how it will look, I realized that our old covers that I had made um, they needed to be replaced um, and I thought I'll just grab some of my you know any of my DK weight yarn that I have you know single balls or scraps and stuff and I found just um, I think it was a classic hot bottle water cover or something like that on Ravelry just a simple um, plain knitting hot water bottle cover and I, I based uh, mine on that one um, and this yarn that I decided to use is an 
really old skein from Bendigo Woolen Mills. It's the Alpaca Rich, I think it's called, and this is the Briar Rose colorway. I had a look in Ravelry because I was curious about how long I've had this in my stash. And I found that in 2008, I made a beret. I think it was a Merit by Woolly Wormhead. It's a mystery beret. I made that in 2008 and I used 50 grams out of this and it's a 200 gram ball. And since 2008, I've tried to use this for a few things. And most recently, my daughter tried to learn to knit using this because she, um, I have a big bucket of, you know, scraps and leftovers of, of DK and eight, you know, eight ply yarn. And this was in there and she liked the color. So she picked that up and wanted to learn to knit with it. So it had been sitting um, you know, in the kitchen with her, you know, like maybe two rows of knitting on it. And I, I thought, okay, that's not going to go any further than that. And this yarn is not really a good yarn to learn to knit with. And so it was just right there. And I just wanted to get started. I thought, okay, well, if, if I can't make a hot water bottle cover out of this, you know, there's not going to be much else I can do with it. So it's time to use it or I'm just going to give it away. So I started the hot water bottle cover and got a bit of a way on it. And I think it's working. I mean, I love how the color's coming out. How they sort of have a bit of a, a depth to them. There's a few different colors in there. And um, it's not a yarn that you want to have on your face. But, you know, hot water bottle cover. Perfect. So that's um, my small plain knitting at the moment. So I got quite a bit uh, done on this last night because my youngest daughter is um, feeling a bit unwell this weekend. She has a sore, sore throat and she's just a bit, I don't know, maybe she has a bit of a temperature. She's just not feeling great. And last night she was just a bit unsettled. So I had to sit next to her um at night time when she was in bed and i just you know this was the only thing i had that i could work on in the dark so i got a few rows done on here when she was falling asleep so that's that one and then i have hmm, let's see i have a a jumper that i have worked a tiny little bit on i think uh this is the throw over by Andrea Maori, and this was you know my main project for a while when I knit the the color work section. Now I'm just knitting round and round on the body, and I've had so many other things that have taken over, um, things that I'm about to show you and the jumper that I finished. So it's been. <laughs> A couple of times I've picked it up when I just needed plain knitting in the round and I've added a few rows to the body. Um, but yes, I have this one and I also have Ghost Horses by... Um, is that by... Oh, I know the name, but I can't think of it. I know he's screaming at me. Uh, Caitlin Hunter. Oh, yes, I have this one and Ghost Horses by Caitlin Hunter, Hunter on the needles. And about a month ago, you know, back then I thought, oh, these jumpers, I'm going to finish them soon. And then I'm going to have time to plan and make new jumpers before July when I'm meant to go to the Sheep and Wool Show in Bendigo. But now I think I'll be very, very happy if I complete at least one of those two jumpers to take with me to Bendigo in July. So we'll see about that. But um, yes, this this it's, it's nothing difficult left on this one. It's just knitting in the round plane. I'm not doing any, I'm just knitting it straight down um, and then the sleeves. So what I have used for this one is um, Marl, a, I think it's, I don't know if it's a lace waist or a light fingering weight yarn that I'm holding double to get a sort of a DK weight, worsted weight, I'm not sure what the pattern is written for. 
Um, so that's what I'm using. I got this yarn from Spinning Weaves. No, Spinning Tails Weaving Yarn. Spinning Yarn Weaving Tails. This is something I can never remember, but maybe you know what I mean. So yes, it's um, now a yarn base that she doesn't stock anymore. And you know, I've purchased a bit of it. <laughs> So I've used uh, two different colours for the green, two different for the orange, and two different colours for the pink to give it a bit of a, a, a nice depth and colour variation. And then it's just the one plain colour for the main colour. And I really love this. And it's going to be so beautiful when I wash it and block it. But yes, that's my Throw Over by Andrea Maori. And then things that have more taken over so we have a knit along at the moment the Anna T cow and this is a knit along that I'm hosting um, doesn't have any firm rules or guidelines or anything we're just all knitting an Anna T by Sarah Stark and posting on Instagram with the hashtag Anna T cow and Anyone who has been using the hashtag for anything Anna T related on Instagram before the end of June, uh, I will randomly select one post uh, that I will send a gift to the person who posted. Just for a little bit of fun. So when Anna T uh, by Sora was released in English, I decided to have this host this well I decided I was going to knit the tea and then I thought it would be fun to have a knit along um so that's what we're doing and Sara wrote this pattern for a yarn base by Swedish dyer but it's the same yarn base as my merino linen singles and this is my Anna tea that I'm knitting in my merino linen singles and this is night market colorway and as you can see my gauge is a bit loose this yarn is very forgiving to knit with because it has a bit of unevenness and texture to it so if you're knitting um, it's a bit uneven it's it sort of just mixes in with how it looks anyway I think this will even up a little bit when I block it I'm knitting on two millimeter needles and I can't go any smaller and I just can't get the gauge to be any tighter I'm sure I could if I made an effort while knitting and just thought about it and you know tightened up all the time but that's not that's not what I want when I'm knitting I want to relax and just enjoy it so I just knitted how it it's a bit like when you're spinning sometimes it's the easiest way to spin is just to let the wool you know do what is easy and you get the thickness that you get depending on the wool and how how it works in your hands and how it works in the wheel so for me knitting is the same I just um, knit it how it feels comfortable to me and I get the gauge that I get and then I just have to modify uh, what I do so my Anna T will be quite a loose fit I think I am um, only a few rounds away from separating the sleeves and body so that's super exciting i would have had this one done by now but obviously other things took over the jumper and then the next project i'll show you soon um using a yarn like this that has all these colors in it is just so great for a design that is like this it's just plain stockinette because it really um, adds something to it and it makes it really enjoyable to see the different colours um, knitted up. So yes, Anna T, use the, um, use the hashtag on Instagram if you're making an Anna T. I've had a few people that have purchased um, my Merino Linen Singles to make the Anna Tees and I've seen some really, really pretty ones on Instagram. And it's so much fun to follow along to see these Anna Tees being made. So that's my Anna Tee. I, um, I really want to 
put a bit more knitting into that one. I'm a bit uh, unsure about my priorities at the moment, I must say. <laughs> With the knitting, what should I knit on? Mm. I guess maybe it just depends on my mood and how tired I am and yes, what's what's a good size of knitting at that time? Okay. The last project I have to share with you is a brand new design by Mindful Making Jane. Uh, I showed you a tiny bit of this last um in my last video because I just started it. This I was meant to test knit for Jane, but I was not a very good test knitter. I had problems deciding on my colours and I just had you know a new job and other things going on. So I'm a bit late, but I'm um I followed along with the other test knitters. I really enjoy that and I'm you know enjoying knitting it now. So the shawl is the rose hip shawl and it was a collaboration between me and Jane. During um, the pandemic last year, I got in contact with Jane and asked if she would like to design something with some of my yarn. And started a, um, we started talking about this and um, you know, we've, we've become friends, friends now, which is lovely, wonderful. Um, so Jane, she decided on three different yarns that she thought would be, look that she thought would look nice in a shawl, and then she has been designing this three-color shawl uh, out of my merino linen singles. And yes, the pattern was just released on Friday, a couple of days ago, and I'll show you uh, what I have so far on my rosehip shawl. It's a really beautiful shawl. It's made up with slip stitches. And three different colors so you get sort of it's color work but with slip stitches and this is mine so it's designed using my merino linen singles but any fingering weight yarn obviously would work and it's um it's a great pattern for using just those single skeins that you might have in your stash nice special uh, single skeins and it works quite well when there's a lot of contrast between the colors but it also works with more muted and um, similar colors I think so I've started mine with the dark colorway for this start bit and now I'm onto the slip stitches sections so here I've introduced my smaragd colorway and now I'm working with my Richmond Birdwing colorway and the dark colorway. And oh, look at that. That is just so beautiful. I love those two together. And I think it re works really well if one of your colors has that sort of variegation or a speckled yarn would be really nice. I think that's so beautiful. So that's what I'm sort of focused on at the moment is knitting on my rosehip shawl. So it, it works out really well in the in the merino linen yarn. Um, has a really nice feel to it, and you get that extra depth from the linen in there. But as I said, any fingering weight yarn, and you know most of us probably have some um, nice um, skeins in our stash that could work together in a shawl like this. So now that I must say. Um, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> this this section here took me some time. Um, I think also because I've been knitting it in a grey and, you know, started a new job and I was tired and everything. Um, that, um, yes, it took me a bit of time and I had to push myself a little bit to get it done. But now that I'm on this section here, I can't stop knitting it. I just, it's all I want to do. So yes, it was definitely worth it. <laughs> so yes, that's the rosehip shawl. And it was so lovely to collaborate with Jane. I couldn't believe what an amazing design she created with my yarn. And, you know, I, it's just so wonderful that out of that, um, just by reaching out to someone that 
we've now formed a friendship. It's just um, lovely. It's just, yes, couldn't have ended up in any better way. It's just wonderful. So yes, that's the rose hip shawl. And I do have quite a bit of the merino linen um, in my shop. Lots of different colours that you can, you know, come up with multiple of different um, combinations. I am now down to my last skeins of the merino linen. So what's on in the shop is what I have at the mill. They're out of stock at the moment and I don't know when they'll get more in. So uh, that's unfortunately how it is with a few bases. Um, but I have I have a lot in the shop, so I'm sure there'll be um, something for for every um, you know every every flavor no every every person with different likes and dislikes different favorite colors I should say uh, that's all the all the knitting that's quite a bit um, I do have so many things on the go now, so I think even though I'm, I'm working more and I don't have all that um, knitting time during the day, because before, when I was working only from home, I would be able to, you know, pick up knitting when I'd sit down and have a cup of tea for morning tea or, you know, have a break any time during the day. I could do a little bit of knitting. Now, basically, the only knitting time is in the evening when I'm, watching TV or doing, you know, just sitting out down relaxing. But because I have so many things that I had started and I have on the go, it's it's quite nice because I feel like I still close to finishing a lot of things. So even if I have a little bit of knitting time, I should be able to um, make a few new things, which is nice or complete a few things. Um, so before we go into the shop news, which is going to be a very short um, segment, I think, I wanted to quickly just mention something that I discovered um, in my, I guess as a result of starting this new job. Um, my new job is in the same workplace that I used to work. Um, I used to work in a lab there. But now my role is as an admin assistant, so it's 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 a completely different role. And whereas before, um, in a lab, I was you know very casually dressed, covered in a, a lab coat. I had to think about um, chemical spills and you know, getting um, stains and get dirty and stuff. So I was you know I would wear clothes. I was not too worried about so it was you know basically a nice thick woolen jumper pair of jeans and sneakers is what i would be wearing now in my new role i'm more of a um, often the first contact people from the outside would have with the workplace and um it's just i have to dress a little bit more formal I might not have to, but I feel like it's more suitable for the role to be a little bit more dressed up. Uh, so I've really had to think about my wardrobe and also because I've been working only from home for over a year, you know, I've been gradually moving from jeans to leggings to track pants <laughs> and all of my big woolen jumpers. And now I've had to just Whoa, really change um, how I dress and I still want to wear some hand knits things that I have made because I really enjoy that and I think it's such a big part of my personality and uh, so what I have found is that my huge number of shawls are finally getting worn again I have so many shawls and I had been almost worried um, about what to do with all these shawls but because I found that I was not wearing them anymore and 
I was feeling a little bit sad because I saw all these lovely shawl patterns and shawl designs, but I would always stop myself from making them because I thought I don't need another shawl. I can't fit another shawl into my life. But now in my new job, I've been wearing shawls every day because I think even though um, I need to be a bit more um, dressed up, a shawl is just adding a bit of, of colour and, you know, now that it's so freezing cold, it's just been warming me up and I think, you know, no one looks very nice when they're cold. So feeling warm and, you know, having your you know, the comfort of your hand-knit shawl, the pop of colour, a bit of fun with a, you know, boring formal dress. <laughs> uh, yes, shawls have just been amazing. I've just, I'm so in love with all my shawls and I have a lot of them. So I think in the past three weeks, um, I have been wearing a new shawl every day and I still have shawls I have not worn at work. So yes, I do have quite a few shawls and now I can just see that the possibilities are endless and I want to make more shawls. For some reason, I seem to have a lot of grey and pink and green in my shawls. So I need to go, <laughs> go and look at other colours for making um, shawls and cowls and and other things and I have also been looking at garments that would be more suitable for more um, formal dressing so I, it's not like I need to wear a suit or anything but I a lot of my hand knits are very bright and you know big so I feel like I would like to have some more delicate knits and maybe more muted colors and more yes that's so i've been looking a little bit of patterns like that um at the moment i don't really have the time to do that but you know and my position is only for six months so i probably won't have anything made before i finish but <laughs> it's been really nice to um you know browse patterns and designs and um find new things that i haven't really thought about before of making so that's nice another thing that's um happened and i think it happens every time i get busy and i have less time for my making and crafting is that i i go and look at things online that i can buy i've been really good i haven't gone all crazy and purchased things online because i obviously have a lot of stuff already but yes um i think to fill that gap of not having the time to actually do the making and crafting it's very nice to just look at pictures and go onto etsy and see what's you know what's there and it's very tempting but so far i've been uh, holding back but um of course also um when i have the possibilities to support other makers and crafters i am very happy to do that so i guess in a way i'm now in a place where I'm more able to do that. Um, so yes, there might be some new things coming into my life. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I was going to keep this short and that's obviously not happening. Let's have a sip of tea and I'll talk about some shop news. Rosehip Island is um, ticking along as normal. I said to a friend the other day that I'm just so grateful for my business i've had it for a few years now i think maybe coming up to six years and it's just been the best thing because my business has been able to change and adapt with what my current life um situation is i guess so i've had it with me through being home with little children through working part-time and then only working from home and now um, it will be with me when I'm working full time and the business um, has different meanings for me through different 
times of my life, I guess, as um, when I was home with small children, the community with YouTube and um, Ravelry and Instagram and back then Etsy was hugely important to me because I was home alone a lot with, you know, a young child. Working part time, it was um, my business was just an amazing way to balance that um, working in science and um, following protocols and having strict guidelines and rules during my work days. And then my business gave me the, the space to be creative and do my own thing and um, yes, creating and making and making my own rules or not following any rules at all was just an amazing thing to have on the side of that. And uh, now working full time, obviously what I can do is limited but I've just changed focus and at the end of a work week and I'm sitting in front of a computer basically most of the day um, doing a bit of physical work and you know lifting pots and working with your hands and um, working with colour. It's Again, it's just being creative and now my job is more... Um, much more social, much more being with people, talking with people, um, doing the dying and being in the studio. It's a bit of nice, quiet time for me. Um, so yes, my business has just been the most amazing thing that I have done for myself, I must say. And I love how it can just change and adapt to what my life looks like at the moment. Um, so with that, I'll say that obviously for the next few months, things might be a little bit differently, different uh, with the business. I don't know if it's going to be much noticeable for any followers or um, supporters, but I'll, um, my focus will be on my clubs, my T and Yarn Club. The June Club has been sent out and it's been received by a few people and it's on the way to a few people. I think because of the current situation in Melbourne and COVID cases, it might be that shipping is a little bit delayed, but I was out early, so it should be with you in June. The July club is already in um, progress and that's happening. I, I'm trying to be a bit ahead because you never know what will happen. Um, so the clubs is, you know, one of my main focus. I've also had some um wholesale orders and um you know one off sort of pop up shop type orders that I'll also um you know focus on and then um there will be advent calendars and I've had lots of questions about advent calendars and yes I will be doing them because I will um I prefer um spending any of my dying time on on things that I um, have already, that are pre-sales, that are already sold. I don't, um, I won't be able to spend as much time just dying to, um, just to fill the shop with things that might get sold and they might sit there for a while. For that dying though, um, I will do a lot of, I think, just one of a kind dying. I think how things look like, look like for me right now, that's going to be what I most enjoy to just use the dyeing as a creative outlet, playing with colors. It's going to be a bit like, you know, painting and creating. And every time I dye a pot of yarn, it's going to be slightly different. I have had some custom orders come in so far. I've been able to fulfill them and I'm, I'm always happy for questions of custom um, orders. If I end up not having time for them, I'm just going to, um, not do them, I guess. But again, anything that I know that I'm actually going to sell at the end of dyeing it is, you know, I prefer that to just dyeing things for the shop. So yes, the focus will change slightly. And in the end, Rosip Island is going to be what I need it to be. And it's going to be at the level where I know that I can, um, produce um, 
good things. <laughs> I know I need to know that I can deliver on the things that I, I do. So, yes. Um, I do have a lot of items in my shop, rosiebarland.com, and I did um, fill it up with the the rest of my merino linen yarn. So there's a lot of choice, both for making Anna teas and for making the rosehip shawl. And I have my my big box of of my, of my merino linen right here. So I thought as just a final thing, I think that's it on my list. As a final thing, I thought I'd just show you a few colors of the merino linen because it's always nice to look at colorful yarn. Um. So I, what did I have? One that's sort of similar to the original one that Jane made of the rosehip shawl are these combinations. This is so purple, golden chai and night market. She did not at all use these colors, but there she did use a purple, a yellow, and then a speckled lighter color. I think they would be nice. And I have looked a lot at or uh, I have looked a lot at quite um contrasting colors but um I, I really like this combination it's dark summer dreams and richmond birdwing so this is the one i have in mind and this is the one i have in mind and then i have a um a teal in green but i don't have that in stock anymore unfortunately i have a succulent green And then this might be another nice combination golden chai again this is sherry lips a new red color and this is frosty night market because this night market came out a bit cooler in the color a bit lighter so that's another combination i have um some more I have some more crazy colors with the disco uh pink rock orchid and fairy lights they might be fun bright shawl together so yes i have lots of options from dark gray to you know very light speckled skeins um if anyone would like photos of a combination of three or if you want you know just a photo in different um I don't know in a different light or you know if you want me to take skeins outside and take photos in natural light although the ones that i have on the website are you know taken in natural light but any photos you like or any combinations i'm always happy to um do that for you so just get in contact if that's something that you would like i think that i will have to end it there i'm actually really really pleased with that i decided to take the time to do this again hopefully and i do think it will be better quality video it's not a great day outside but it's not as dark as yesterday last night or in the afternoon yesterday when i did this it was basically evening light it was so dark so i'm happy i did this and i hope you have enjoyed and um i'll be back until i see you next time take care Bye.